the culprit responsible for all this devastation is a river called Nyamwamba. It takes its rise from the Renzori Mountain in the Uganda DRC border district of Kasese. Once a famous tourism attraction, River Nyamwamba is today a curse to the Pearl of Africa. Both the Katiri and Blembia Primary Schools were founded by the Canadians in the 1950s. These top-class schools provided quality education to children of main workers and businessmen who came not only from Uganda but also neighboring Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda, DRC, Burundi, Sudan, among other countries to work in the Kilembe copper mines starting in the 1940s. But in May 2013, the people of Kilembe were robbed of the decades of shine and sparkle of these centers of academic excellence. River Nyamwamba had poured all its waters into the town, leaving the untold damage on its path. Over eight lives were lost and properties worth 54,054 US dollars were damaged and swept away by the river. Today, the 743 and 813 pupils who are enrolled in the schools have to cope up with the devastating situation in which they find themselves. All our buildings were swept away and all our documents, some like books and the rest, desks and everything, they were all taken by Nyamamba. So I've been here trying by all means to make sure that the school still exists. Otherwise, when the minister came here, he, 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 he ordered that this school should be closed. We are still lacking scholastic materials. Our children are still suffering. Some of them do not even receive lunch because Nyamamba had to wash away most of the crops which were grown along the river banks. And these children are suffering a lot. I request that every stakeholder can come and assist us as a resourceful person to mobilize these young ones to go to school, stay in school, and then uh, complete at least primary or basic education level. One of the challenges that we have here in the Blender School is the sitting posture, whereby we are lacking desks. As you can see, the learners are seated down. The things that they are seated down, these are containers that are where, that came here, which the tents were being put inside. But the tale of River Nyamwamba's destructive capacity is neither limited in time nor space. Upon clearing with the Kasese District Resident Commissioner, we then rushed to Mohocha Internal Displaced People's Camp. It is located approximately 343 kilometers from Kampala, Uganda's capital. The camp is temporarily hosting over 1,000 victims of the River Nyamamba floods that hit Kanyangea Nyamamba Division in 2020. It destroyed property worth 140,000 US dollars. Many residential and commercial facilities were destroyed, yet there is no certainty about the permanent relocation of the victims. Nibaiza, Nibatuyambu. But still, Nyon is sticking akin to Kim permanent settlement. Hakuba no bara to later handwaka to Gabire Motoka to Taina Makaka to Kuraram Kurungi Mama, the Twinage to Kuram. Kakuba to Tunga, a Maka gate. Nato to Kabao had Sazen to Leon to Burabura. Hakaja sent as a Mioga were not the beneficiaries. Haizira Parish Modo, we are not among the beneficiaries. Hatiaho to Libania Uganda, Rund. Kande kikunsaliza, 
ni baba batu naga mukutunga services in case no sanga ngu tuabure zu services betu kando wilo bukiko ugama ni bagenda koma nora ni batu izira hanu ni bagamba mbenda bakoleki ito wabakazi tugende koma nutuchukora mbusasi ni nyendi hanga likimanyi kanyangea is a renowned bricklaying hub in the Rensori region since time in Memorial. Other activities such as fishing and water red harvesting also thrive along the banks of River Nyamwamba. This is what is left of the numerous houses and toilets that they had constructed in the stinking wetland along the river banks. Despite the prevailing risk of similar disasters in the near future, it's business as usual in this one-time busy suburb. According to the local authorities, measures have been taken to address these challenges. The locals have not taken heed in spite of the efforts to enforce them. We have started in our campaign of educating our, our citizens about the good practices of farming that they should adopt. They should change from the, the traditional ones and come to the modern ones. For example, as government, we have started, we have started teaching them about tree planting, that is afforestation. And we have gone ahead by giving them even free tree seedlings so that this exercise can smoothly be done with the hope that by the end of at least two to three years we shall have a good other trees which will start helping us to reduce the speed of water as how it used to be. Then secondly we have also uh, tried to teach them other methods of farming like terracing such that when rain waters come in, in, in higher volumes, those terraces can try to reduce the speed of those waters which would be running from the mountains up to the valley of the river Nyamamba. In so doing, we hope that we shall end up uh, curbing down the situation of the river getting uh, mud. We hope that maybe the culture which is in the people of cutting the trees in search for food and the school fees can be reduced. In so doing, we shall have solved the problem of tree cutting. Several research studies have been carried out about the Nyamwamba, among other flood rivers in the district. We have the October, December season, which I just called October season. We also have May, rather February, uh, May season, which I just called May season. If the extreme rainfall takes place and occurs during the October season, it means that it would occur mostly mid-downstream. And of course, rainfall which is mid-downstream intensively does not cause an intense flood because the intensity is caused by where the river comes from, so from upstream. So if it happens that at the time of this intense rainfall, it is during the May season, or it occurs upstream, then we can expect an intense flood. Research has also been conducted on the contribution of human activities to the recurrent flash floods. Recommendations have also been made. People are looking for food and they are planting crops for, uh, for food at the household level. The strongest uh, uh, strategy would be to go nature-based solutions and some of the practices or measures under nature-based solution could be apiculture because if people are keeping bees and producing honey and other products uh, then they can use the money they generate from apiculture to buy the food. Kasese district has a disaster risk management committee. In spite of the financial difficulties that it is facing, it is working hand in hand with various stakeholders to contain the floods and come to the victims' rescue as well. We have uh, encouraged some counties to identify evacuation centers. In case a disaster happens, in case of a flood in your, in your area, 
we don't, we don't want to see people or the affected persons to go to a school a health facility. We should identify just a piece of land. When this happens, you can quickly uh, ferry or evacuate people. Unfortunately, we do not have uh, money or funds secured to address issues of disaster. Right off from the center. What has been done as a district as part of the innovation is to, to consider this in a, in a multi sectoral manner. Having lived through this repeatedly, the victims have clear ideas of what they think can be done to address the challenges they are facing. It is the government to make sure that they are working tooth and nail to control River Nyamwamba. Then, secondly, is the, the ministry to see that really the school is reallocated from this valley, which is on a risk that any time when the river overflows, again these buildings can be destroyed. Some non-government organizations are also involved in disaster risk management in Uganda. They have put in place a number of measures to address the impacts of climate change and environmental degradation in Uganda and believe that this will yield positive results. What we do now is to ensure that we reach out to the community through our community volunteers that were trained by Uganda Red Cross and we ensure that they have the capacity to respond. Because we already developed a DPP by the district the districts are in position now to support uh, all other sex stakeholders within the, within the districts. We have a community action plan. This action plan supports the community to ensure that they identify areas where disaster always strikes. For instance, they know that in this area, this parish, there is always flooding. So they always know how to prevent it during the time of flood. Kilimbi will forever have a special place in my heart. But flashbacks of the beautiful childhood memories I've kept for decades now contrast so sharply with the site of a near ghost suburb I've just visited. It is a tale of survival in a faded relationship between the river and the people that needs urgent mending.